Greetings, you turrets turning tremendously, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrex, and of course, welcome back to the Land Adventure Mode. In today's video, our only real goal is to update our weapons and update the main chunk of our hull, this lovely top section, so that we can begin conversion into our final tank form in the next video. Today will likely be the last day we're going to be a sled, though I really hope we can make this last day of its existence a fun, happy, and explosive one. So the main things I really want to do with the hull is extend it probably to where these sleds are currently and make it a little bit deeper in the core so that we have space for more advanced cannons or just more sizable weapons. I also want to change up how we're currently doing the propellers. I want two sets of two rather than just the two we have currently. And honestly, that's just about it. That's going to be very expensive. It's going to take a very long time to do and it's going to be some major renovation work. We currently do have some resource now that we've devoured the torso we ended up with in the previous video. I will be bringing that back later on since everyone seems to enjoy the idea of having that floating above us as a secondary um, tech. So... Let's just get down to it then. The first thing I need to do is just extend this hull and see how this thing's going to actually work out. It's going to be a lot of building today, at least to begin with, so I'm probably going to be running away from enemies for a while. And honestly, we need all the help we can get. There's been some weird pictures on Twitter from the lovely From the Depths crew, and apparently some very scary things are in the works. I mean, just look at this thing. It's big. Okay, so this is about half an hour later. I have made a big block of metal in the core. I have doubled our cram cannon. It is quite literally just double the cram cannon. Uh, this one fires every 19 seconds. The old one is every 25 seconds. So overall, it's over double the firepower. I've changed the gun at the front to use fragment rounds. I'm really keen to see how they do. I'm a bit skeptical about them, but apparently everyone seems to love them. So hopefully they are as good as people say. And I've changed where I'm currently sitting, over here. And yes, with this rounded front, it does look like I'm building a really bad knockoff star vessel, so yeah, this one's going to be weird. Oh, bombs. Also, star vessel? What a weird way to say starship. So there's the new fragments. Ooh, 35k and a lot of things are sheared off there. That's not bad. Now, in theory, the fragment should be doing four times the damage of the flak, but that's only if every single fragment hits the target. Still, though, a nice first showing, although, of course, that enemy was just... Did I really not move out the way of the bombs? Anyway, it was a weak enemy made of wood. Every weapon would look good. I'm going to keep on moving, then. This is actually now difficulty 30. I did have to move out of the original zone because of enemies fighting me. Okay, enough waffle. I'm going to continue building. Star Vessel. Hey everyone, Future Lathrix here quickly, just say a couple of things. Firstly, and most importantly, a lot of you have noticed there have been a few sound issues in the previous videos. This is because our new house currently has no soundproofing. I have ordered soundproofing, it apparently vanished in the mail, I got a refund, and more soundproofing is on its way. Currently, I'm using cardboard boxes and towels, which apparently isn't quite good enough for the overall quality of the videos, but don't worry, everything will be fixed in the coming few weeks, so I do apologise for the echo up until then. The joys of moving house with so, so many things to sort out. Secondly, in this video, we're going to go through a series of red portals and even a blue portal at the very end, which means the difficulty is going to be spiking massively after this video, so any suggestions for a final design of our craft are now very, very welcome, because soon we're going to give it its final design. Once in a blue portal, it means there are no enemies, though the difficulty will spike massively afterwards, and so really, this is our last chance to just spend some proper time designing, making it look pretty and everything else, before we send it back out into the wild. This series has been an absolute joy to record so far, and this video itself, well, you're gonna see we're making things a lot bigger, and bigger is generally better. So with that, back to the past, back to the series itself, and to some glorious explosions. Thank you so much for watching, likes and comments of course are always welcome, they have helped out this channel massively over the last few weeks, and I can only express my eternal gratitude. Thank you, and goodbye. And by eternal, I meant to say sincere. Can I please stop being attacked by these things for five seconds? Ooh, that was a lovely hit though. Okay, so fragments are definitely good with these things. I'll be collecting that, thank you. Nine to 2k, not bad. Okay, so that is the Sentinel from the Onyx Watch. 
I think I need long the barrels, because I'm going to hurt myself doing this, I think, with this weapon. Okay, Fragment seems okay against Metal Armor here. It's proven itself against airborne targets. I'm kind of sold by the Fragments. Ow. I'm also sold by the fact I spent most of my money on heavy armor. Well, layers of armor anyway. It's mostly light alloy. That thing's just made of health, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it did have a heavy armor core. Okay, well, that's gone. Thank you very much, Sentinel. Yeah, I am really, really sold on these frags. This is a good test uh, target as well because it keeps healing up afterwards, but we are just outdoing the healing with this. And this is a tiny cannon, a tiny, tiny little railgun. Some higher gauge uh, fragments like that might be really fun to use in the future as a form of AI. Also very happy with the cram cannon upgrade. It's just been a delightful day. Okay, we have a new hostile over there towards the north. Okay, the skis look a little bit better now than they were before, considering the word is lumps. Now they're lumps with style. Uh, what is that? Oh, is that another one of those nuke ones? No, it's- oh, it's not one of you! So far, every one of those I've seen have just been inactive. Uh, you know, let's continue as we were before. I don't know why, but I've suddenly started to go east. Really should arm this up properly, you know, so I can't be just instantly killed, but... It's kind of nice just being out in the open air, just relaxing on the dunes. So, I don't want to rush the difficulties, because honestly, that can be incredibly boring, but I've decided to increase the difficulty again, so now we are in difficulty 35. Hopefully we'll see some new designs, perhaps more of the Onyx Watch and above. I think I'm decently prepared to fight most enemies that aren't hyper-specialized. We do need some anti-missile stuff, I think that's the next thing we really need to add, some proper missile interceptors. And then I can even use the new missile components, the munition decorator. Maybe we'll throw carrots at the enemy. Or giant cubes. Or Larry's white. Oh, wait a bloody moment. With the mis with the munition decorator, can you potentially, I don't know, use the mannequin? Can you fire mannequins? So, it's a bit complex as to whether or not you can use a mannequin for the munition decorator. If you just try to put a mannequin into the decorator, it doesn't work. But you can put the individual pieces there. So, just as a quick test... That's a uh, mannequin head. That's our missile. That right there is a perfectly valid missile with high explosive warheads. I can't express to you how much I am looking forward to using this properly and spending hours making proper mannequins which fly. Oh my god, it's going to be glorious. But okay, I'll resist for now. There's other things to do. I can make a whole video on that. Tell me if you want to see a whole video on that, because I've got to be honest, I kind of want to make just a whole video making different missiles. I mean, a fist will work fantastically, right, as a thing to, to grab enemy weapons. Oh, apparently we're also actually after an enemy there. Hello, I'm a hand. First enemy in difficulty 30, the Taipan. I don't know what that one is, but I feel like it's not a particularly large enemy. Oop, well, it lagged out. I'm going to keep the weird floating fist there for a while to confuse people. Interesting, an enemy Tempest. Oh, that's interesting as well. I've just changed up the gun. Apparently, I'm not quite getting enough rail power there to fire all the shells at once. Now I've added a couple of extra. Oh, look at that! Did I mention I am so sold on the fragments? I need to make a main gun like that. That's going to be so much fun. Some high gauge railgun action with those fragments. 
That's gotta be good, right? I think I'll stay in this difficulty for another half an hour. If we don't see larger targets, I will increase the difficulty again to 40. Which really isn't something I particularly want to do, but I will do if I have to. Do, do, do. I just love that gun, it's so fun. There we go, now they'll fire at once. Yeah, what I had done is I'd added too many extra auto loaders to it, so it's trying to fire them all at once, but then running out of charge. I've just increased how much maximum charge we can have, rather than increasing its draw, because that was easier. First time seeing a resource zone in, like, hours, and there's actually two of them, so I'm harvesting both of them entirely. I've also changed my cram cannon again, so now it's back to a slower fire rate, but for more damage. In the previous clips, I just wasn't happy with the damage it was doing, so now it's gone from just shy of 30 to just over 40,000 per shell, so that's a good chunk of damage, nearing 90,000 damage per attack, but now at 35 second cooldown, so... Start the fight with the cram cannon, then swap over to the shotgun fragment. That's kind of the tactic I've got in my head at the moment. Oh, and that's one more resource zone depleted. We continue our parasitic march. What about jazz hand missiles? Like, that's a good idea, right? Jazz hands! I find this weapon really grips me. It's a real slap to the face. Really need to give it a hand for that one. Ha! Whoa, that is a lot of missiles. I am so glad I spent so much money making us pretty much EMP immune, because everything has EMP! What was that? Is it just over this hill? Yes, it is. Okay, what are you, O oh bearer of a million missiles? Wow. That is a really neat little design. 42k, okay, it's not that little, but still. Love how it's done in the missile section. Look at the details on this thing. Okay, well, that's just awesome. Whether built that should be very, very proud of themselves. That looks absolutely phenomenal. What's happened to my cram cannons then? I didn't see the explosion. And only 40k damage. Weird. Still, the uh, rails did their job there. I think that's the turret. And, well, I was going to say completely destroyed. Apparently not. Thought I saw one of the vital components gone. Feel weird skiing after it like this. Come on, one more hit to the turret. There we go. Surely that can't be online still now. Let's speed up. I'm, I'm just curious what happened to my shells. That's better. Still, really neat design. Definitely sturdier than I expected it to be as well. Okay, I'm going to be increasing the difficulty again here. I didn't really want to do this, because this will bring us into difficulty 45. We are approaching the 50... the 50 way mark. The half way mark now. Which isn't what I wanted to do today, but I do want an enemy which brings us a bit more closer to death. A bit more pain both ways, you know. Apparently that's just the way Lathrix do. Cloud of little stinging barbs. Oh, just two shots. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I am really sold by the fragment shots. Well, that was that one gone as well. I'm increasing the difficulty again. I really, really want to see at least a couple more larger opponents before the end of this video to test out our cram cannon properly, because this might be the last time we have this cram cannon. I'm really considering having a high gauge flak weapon, and by flak I meant to say fragment weapon, which would just be a load of fun. Was that explosion from the last realm, the last difficulty level? Yes, it was.
Well, we continue. At the moment, the control of this craft is absolutely sublime. It is super, super fun to use. Especially in first person, although... Maybe if I jump up, there we go. Oh, now that is cool. The Scorn Swarm. Oh, I love the design of that. I remember early days of From the Depths, even when the enemy designs were a bit more basic, more akin to my designs, but now things are just so next level. Okay, that was a lot of attacks just then. So it seems like the drones themselves do the bulk of the damage. In which case, really, I shouldn't be focusing on that main drone at all. I should be focusing on the little things. Especially since with our fragment rounds, we should be able to destabilize them decently quickly, I imagine, with a good few shots. So, what type of missiles are those? I don't know. Uh, moving seems to be really beneficial here. Okay, we can pretty much one-shot them. This one took a bit of damage from the other attack, and it looks like it's a bit out, out of control. Still one left after that. Still, though, really cool design. I think I just kind of countered them with my anti-air capabilities here. Where's the main drone gone? Oh, that is the main drone. Okay, that one does have weapons as well. Maybe they were EMP. We did take some hits from the first wave of attacks, but honestly, didn't seem to do too much. Let's try and dodge to the left here. Ooh, I don't know what those were. Didn't see, didn't see any explosions, but also didn't really see any EMP damage go off. Maybe it just hit a bad part of us if it hit directly underneath on the ski. Oh no, they are EMP. Well, that's a shame for them then. That's why they're not doing too well. We are EMP resistant to the max. Not only do we not have a mainframe to begin with, all that other stuff is protected heavily by surge protectors and internal stone armor. Really, really cool design. Sadly, just a bit of a counter here on our part. Could you stop that? I wonder where the AI actually is in that thing. I guess the most protected section would be the back section here. Like there. Okay, I need to find out. Let's uh, move closer because I want to see the internals of this thing. EMP damage is... Oh, yeah! Rubber is super EMP resistant. Oh, maybe I should have been using that then. Well, that's something to know for the future. So what I'm thinking is this. We're going to try and save up another 50,000 or so resources. That'll bring me to about 160k total for the craft. And then we're going to find a blue portal in the next video and then do a complete redesign, converting ourselves heavily into a tank. For those who don't know, a blue portal, which are far rarer than the others, will take you up multiple difficulty levels, not just the five that reds do. But the zone you enter is completely devoid of enemies, which means you have unlimited time to repair, to do retrofitting, to just build in general. So that's the idea now. Hopefully we'll see a couple more enemies and then we'll do a massive jump in the next video in which we become our tanky tanky selves. And also lose some of the RTGs. At the moment most of our resources are locked into RTGs and that's because of our movement type. Wheels are a lot cheaper I've found and run when you're not quite running enough energy. So I think that'll be okay. Then I'll make sure to have some batteries not attached to the engine purely for our railguns. Because I'll probably end up with two of them. The railguns have been insanely fun so far. But yeah, tell me what you think about that. The railgun versus just more cram cannon action. I do kind of love them both, but the railgun has been really versatile. Well, that's definitely one of the Onyx Watch units. And yes, they did just fire into the ground. To assert dominance, clearly. Ooh, let's try and dodge that if we can. Okay, only hit our side, I think, then. My weakest part actually is directly on the front of this craft, funnily enough, right now. Because of the size of the railgun. It's not particularly big, but it is taking up all that cavity, and so there's only a couple of layers on the very front. On the side, it's fine, and behind, it's fine, but on the front, no. Oh, I think that's their main gun gone. That kind of just didn't fire properly, then. Yeah, that's it. It's done for. 
Maybe manual fire is too strong. I think it's just stopped. Maybe we took out its engine. Oh, look at it trying to find us. Okay, I feel a little bit mean. But explosions are fun. Oh, hello there. Is that a wisp, I believe? In a really awkward position. There we go. Oh, that was unfortunate. Directly underneath there, I think that's a one-shot KO. Yeah, it is gone. Low materials. Must have took out all of its material um, storage then. Not as much resource as I expected, though. A little bit more. Then we we'll need to find a blue resource. A blue resource. And a blue portal, which are just so much rarer than the rest. So far, there's a lot of... Oh. <coughs> okay, so as I was saying, super rare blue portals. I'm going to go next to that portal then and camp it out until a couple more enemies appear. We're going to get up to 50k resource, and then that's where we're going to end the episode. Next video, I promise, I'm going to be massively scaling up the difficulty. I was really hoping at this point we'd see uh, some more larger enemies, but it seems like because there isn't as many designs in the land version, a lot of them are going to be locked away further on. Ooh, what are you... Whoa. That one's 60k, so that there is actually a type of particle cannon, so that's going to do immense damage if it dares reach you. So, loads of backup movement types. Really, I think the only thing to do there is try and go underneath here, and then that should be alright. Okay, we're going to reverse, try and get some higher ground here, and get ready to reverse more if the thing gets too close. It's decently quick, but not as quick as us, I think. Especially if we start moving forwards to avoid it. Just using fragments at the moment. I'm trying to just do... Oh! I hide it! Wow. I must have got so bizarrely lucky there in terms of hitting its AI. One of the fragments must have gone through. Oh, I'm not going to be able to capture it. Okay, you know what? I think 36,000 is enough, though I'm going to give it another half an hour. If an enemy spawns in, we'll fight that. If not, we are going through the blue portal. I have now been playing for about eight hours tonight, and yeah, I am starting to lose my mind a little bit. This game mode is definitely my favourite in From the Depths, but it is also incredibly slow-paced at times, and this has been one of those times where just things just didn't happen as fast as I would like. Still though, super happy with the final sled design, to be completely honest. It's decently armoured all over, you can tell that the railgun's doing its job well, and the cram is a really good secondary weapon, as much as that was originally going to be the, way, the other way around, but we need to make it a bit more official. And once we go through the blue portal, we have all the time to make it look good. We can do some decorations, we can do some proper uh, weird stuff with the controls, we can make the weapons a bit more efficient, there is so much we can do when we can build forever with no threat of enemies. So I'll just wait around here, and I'll be right back if something happens. In case you're wondering why I sounded so sleepy in that past clip, this is Future Lafix by the way, the timestamp for that last video was 3am. I had been recording all day at that point, and apparently my mind had just left me. Floating wooden pillar without context. Could a burst like that be a bit more fun than the shotgun? I don't know. It's gonna have about the same reload time. A little bit less because of the duration of the burst. So with that, the odds of at least one shot hitting are increased, but you don't get that lovely spread of damage. I don't know. I'm just trying to think for the main weapon, since I'm probably gonna go for a medium gauge railgun. We can either go for shotgun or a burst gun like that is really what I'm thinking of as opposed to just a more regular fire rate. I need to test it against something to see if it's satisfying or not. I mean, that was pretty effective. So the non-shotgun variant, that was pretty deadly. So the main benefit this is going to give, especially at shorter ranges where the accuracy negative isn't quite as bad, is that we can core into the enemy. The shotgun will all hit the, the outer blocks and then shred everything around them, whereas if we have a burst, it will go into the enemy a little bit more efficiently. We can increase accuracy, but it's adding way more uh, recoil suppressors. I just didn't really have space on this tiny little turret. But that seems deadlier. 
The negative, I think, is going to be actually hitting targets flying and such, or super fast targets. That's where I think the shotgun's going to be better, at least scoring some damage. Whoa! Did not see those missiles. Thankfully, they're apparently very short range. Well. You know what? I think that might be it. I've now been here for 50 minutes. I was going to stay here for just 30, but I was hoping something larger would arrive. I know for a fact larger enemies can arrive. I'm just getting very unlucky. We are in a high difficulty at this point. At least we are back here at the midpoint. I know for a fact in the other runs, there are scarier things that can arrive in this difficulty. I may stick around for a tiny bit longer, but I think that's it for this craft before we have a major, major difficulty spike with the blue portal. Don't want it to get boring is the thing. Very pretty through the blue portal. Well, that's going to be it then. I have now been here for well over an hour. We're just seeing the same targets over and over again at the moment due to purely bad luck. I do apologise for that, but it is just luck of the draw. And so we are going through the blue portal. This will massively increase our difficulty. We are now in difficulty 60, so very much past the halfway point. And once we go to one of these red portals in the distance, that will take us to difficulty 65. So at that point, we are two-thirds of the way through the land adventure mode. We are currently about 120,000. So in total, we'll be about 160,000 once we use the resource we have stored, and that's how we're going to arrive in this newer difficulty. As you've seen from the Twitter post earlier, apparently there are much scarier designs being added to the game soon, so hopefully we'll see those by the time we get there, or at least in the future. So with that, and in the darkness, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. So far, this campaign has been one of my favourite I've recorded in a very long time. I'm absolutely loving this adventure mode, and I'm really keen to see what our tank is going to look like now we can use more expensive things. Because honestly, we're very big. In terms of just sheer size, this is a very large vehicle, but it's all cheap. The skis are cheap. The movement times types are cheap. The cram cannon is cheap. There's lots of hollow spaces. We're going to become a lot smaller, but hopefully a lot more deadly once we enter our first tank form. This is more of a very angry chrysalis. So with that chrysalis, have a lovely day and do take care. And until next time, stay hydrated.